It's funny, I've had this now as a theme on the show a couple times. I had Liquid Death come on, you know, the water in the can. Yeah, of course. Mike Cesario, huge friend. Yep. Yeah. So we had them on the show, you know, they talked about their marketing. It's just insane marketing and, you know, that obviously built the company. And then we had another alcohol company come on where they had a reality TV show and then they basically built this better for you alcohol brand, had it on the reality TV show. And then of course it took off. I think it was called Summer House. Maybe that's the reality TV show. Anyways, it's a theme that keeps coming up now with a lot of founders I'm talking to. But I want to hear, how do you measure the media like effectiveness when you're like creating these campaigns? I mean, you guys are doing this like semi reality TV show. You're all over TikTok. You have like, I think I saw you guys have like almost 100,000 followers on Instagram. Like you guys have a lot there. But how do you measure like, is it working? And I say this because a lot of I would say big influencers, you can see that their conversions like aren't there. Like they'll have, you know, millions of followers and then they might have like, I don't know, a hundred people like something. And you're like, that's actually not, a, and even liking doesn't really matter. Like likes don't matter, views don't matter. Like, are they doing the thing that you hope eventually they do? So how do you, how do you think about this when it comes to, you know, you're building out a media company essentially at the same time as your product company? So the first thing I'll say for the audience is you have to remove yourself from the obsession we've gotten to in that everything needs to be tracked to a click and have attribution attached to it. That is the biggest constraint I see so many founders we speak with is they can't get out of their own way when it comes to measurement, 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 measurement. I think for us, the first hypothesis was, well, who are the most successful CPG companies in the world? Seems that a lot of celebrities are launching CPG companies that are becoming super big fast. And so when you distill that, you're like, well, why is that? They don't overly promote the product. They don't do anything that's like overly about the product. They have an audience that's built into who they are as a platform, what type of level of entertainment that they provide to their audiences. And when you think about how they built those audiences, they definitely didn't build them thinking about how much cans of X will I be able to sell? How much drinks will I be able to sell? How much popcorn will I be able to sell? They built them on how do I deliver the best possible entertainment for my base? Whether you're an actor, a singer, a reality television star, how do you entertain primarily and build a relationship of where an end consumer or fan gives a shit about your life. And so for us, that was like hypothesis number one. Why do you already need to be a celebrity to do that? Can you do the inverse? Can you actually celebritize yourself? And this was an idea that my partner Jake brought to the table. Why don't we celebritize ourselves through the storytelling of trying to build this massive audacious goal and in turn build fans? And if we get that viewership and point and are religiously focused on providing entertainment value, knowledge, or any type of thing that's not selling our product, then we should be rewarded. So at the beginning, it was really like, hey, this doesn't really matter what the outcome is, as long as we're getting the eyeballs to where we need to, and things are happening, good. And so that was, Steph, back to your point, well, why did we sell any, why did we get to a million dollars of revenue in less than 12 months in Montreal, one city in the entire North America, because people were watching this show that was happening on Instagram. So for me, that was like anecdotal, but that's enough. Like, I don't need to see more. We had no presence, no distribution. We started telling a story on Instagram. And after a year, we had a million dollars of revenue without paying a single dollar for Instagram or Facebook ads. And so that gave us the courage to continue to invest in this black space of the unknown of what's the ROI of really developing content. Now, if you fast forward to where we are today, I can give you some real numbers because we're big enough. We have data coming through us from retailers. When we launched Target nationally, we basically launched into the store. We had a month of rollout before we were really focused on letting our audience know about Target. And the second we started making content around what we were doing, but including Target in the conversation, 
we brought revenue from, it was at about $34,000 a month, a week to $74,000 a week. Hey, thanks for watching. This segment was made possible by our friends at Salesforce Commerce Cloud. If you're looking for the number one platform for all your commerce needs, go check out salesforce.com slash commerce. And don't forget to subscribe below and tap that little bell icon so you can stay on top of all the amazing new segments and full episodes that we'll be putting out over the coming year with some of the best and most influential commerce leaders out there.